everyone, it's me again. Um, okay, so I'm gonna share. I just wait on my lava, and um, when I walked into Publix, um, it was a weave shack experience, and um, I was pulling a Parker. <laughs> uh, I walked in, and um, there was a line. There was uh, four girls around the scale. Um, three were standing around the scale, and one was on the scale. And I don't know what came over me, but you know, I was all smiles, and I said, "It's a great scale." And um, you know, basically, it went, Arr! and they all turned around and you know, goosenecked me and gave me the stank face. So. Um, the girl steps off the scale and she says, well, I think it sucks. And I said, why? And she said, well, I wanted to gain weight and it says I lost weight. So that just brings me back to what I shared the other day, you know, I mean, here we are struggling to weight and I'm over there weighing on the scale wanting to see it go down she wants to see it go up you know they were four beautiful young girls and um, nothing wrong with them uh, anyways um, we just have to appreciate uh, what we have when we have it and do our best to improve where we can um, but all the way along we have to definitely appreciate what we have, you know. Maybe we'll reach that goal. Maybe we won't, but we need to appreciate and enjoy uh, the journey getting there. So, um, so anyways, I left from there, and, um, and I wanted to share with you guys, um, today is the anniversary of an intense experience for me, um, one year anniversary. Um, I had mentioned to you guys that I did gain some of the weight back, and I did, uh, and I did do a round before this one, I don't remember the, the, um, I don't remember the, uh, length of the round, but I was doing the round because, um, because weight started to creep back up on me because, um, I was given the wrong, uh, thyroid medication doses by accident from the pharmacy and I didn't know that and you know everything just went out of whack so I, I started to um, my weight started to creep up on me and you know you're supposed to stay within two pounds above or below and um, anyways I don't have the stats on that but it was enough to where I felt like I needed to start around and clean that know what up so I did and um, and I was doing good everything was fine and um, again I don't know the length of the round but I was in p3 stabilizing in p3 and uh, I get a phone call from um, my old boss's son and this is uh, the person that I worked for um, before I got sick and um, we were very good friends or we still are we're, we're very good friends and um, you know confidants of each other and uh, so I had gotten a phone call a few weeks before this and um, he just you know didn't go into a lot of detail but he asked me um, to please look into finding um, a company that would insure him health insurance because he didn't have any health insurance. He lost his health insurance. And, um, you know, he knew that I was at home uh, healing from um, topical chemotherapy and that I had the time to put into that. So he asked me to do that, and I did. And um, so I uh, submitted all of his paperwork and everything, and... Um, and so, uh, we were waiting for, um, you know, for the approval. And, um, so it's February 13th, 2012, and I'm on the road, um, 
actually I was going to see my friend that is that I'm helping you around now and um, I get a phone call from uh, you know my friend's son my ex boss's um, son and he says uh, I'm on my way to the hospital with my dad and he just had a heart attack and he asked me to call you to find out if um, insurance is uh, gone through, if he's covered or not, and um, so, you know, I, I turned right back around, and I, I rushed, you know, all the way into the other side of town, and when I got to the hospital, he was already wheeled into surgery, um, and they had to do an emergency quadruple bypass, and um, so while I was in the waiting room, I called the insurance company and he just that morning was approved. So, um, so that was a blessing. Um, anyways, uh, it was a very sticky medical situation and I ended up staying in the hospital the whole time that he was there. I slept on a, on a, a chair, um, hospital room and I micromanaged everything in that hospital stay because if I didn't he would have not come out of that hospital um, it was just a bad situation and um, so I wrote down everything I wrote down every medication when's the next medication you know made the corrections because there was several times where they were giving him uh, you know the wrong medication or at the wrong time or just like left him like one time they left him just you know I went home to take a shower and when I came back like he had been pressing the button like they just left him in um, in a wet bed so um, I stayed there for the seven days and I was you know mind you I was stabilizing so um, I was eating like apples and uh, hard-boiled eggs and Lara bars and almonds and, you know, old grilled chicken out of my pocketbook, and um, I was doing fine, but when when we got him out of the hospital, I then transferred, I ended up staying uh, at the home with him and his uh, kids, and, um, and uh, I stayed with um, them for four months, and I helped with his rehabilitation and um, you know in the very beginning stages like those those first few weeks you know it was just like um, you know setting my clock and giving him I mean it was giving him his medication and like he could not it was he could not make it to the bathroom by himself he could not you know do things by himself so um, so that's what I did and it was an intense experience. I wouldn't take it back for anything. Um, to me, that's what we should do for each other. And, um, so, uh, I was, I was, you know, stabilizing that whole time. And, um, you know, they're a family of eaters. And um, we, I was making a lot of meals because uh, he, he had lost his, his whole um, sense of taste. Like he didn't want to eat. There's a lot of depression that goes on with a quadruple bypass. And this this type. I mean, it's it's an intense situation. And um, you know, he was having enough stuff going on in his life as well. So so, anyways, um, my weight started to creep up a little bit. Um, I remember weighing there. I didn't have my scale, and it was like I was 123 for a while, and then all of a sudden I was 126, and then. You know, all of a sudden I was, you know, 129. I was eating some foods that I'm not used to. Um, I know I was kind of hooked on these little, little raspberry candy things. Um, uh, I, that was like the worst that I ate. There, there were these little gummy raspberry candy things. And it was one thing that I could get him to eat. So it was very hard to get him to eat. Um, and he, he just liked the whole thing of food. And making food at, late at night getting everybody to sit around the table and having several different dishes and 
and that was fine and I don't feel like I overdid it but it was still a lot of different choices and things that I wasn't used to and it was a stressful situation you know I wasn't sleeping in my bed I wasn't sleeping a lot you know I I was waking up pretty much every hour on the hour at least in the, the first couple of weeks I mean I, I really had no sleep at all um, anyways uh, <laughs> After four months, I made it home. When I made it home and I got on my own scale, I think I was like, I don't remember. I wrote it down, but, you know, I was up and um, it wasn't that bad. I, I think it was maybe 126 or 129, which is not good, <laughs> but it, you know, it wasn't, you know, a monstrosity or anything. It's something that could have been fixed. But then, uh, I had a little spot on my nose that I had been watching for a little while and because I was, you know, playing nursemaid and, you know, rehabilitation coach, um, I had put it off and um, when I got home, I, I went and had it checked and it, sure enough, it was infiltrative cancer and that's what you're looking at now, what I'm dealing with. And um, so I went into a dark hole and I knew it was I was gonna have to do a round and I knew this this is this is exactly the format of last time so uh, I went ahead and decided you know what I'm not going to start the round until after my first surgery and um, and so right after my first surgery I was going to start my round which I did so before that it, for the for that last cup for the, the few weeks between that I allowed myself to eat anything that I wanted or maybe it was a month I don't know what it was but whatever it was I ended up ballooning up to 144 and then with loading 146.8 I believe so so that's what happened that's the story of how I ended up, um, you know, gaining some of the weight back. It's not because of HCG. It's not because I, you know, struggle with yo-yo or yo-yoing or anything like that. And um, and today is my friend's anniversary. Um, you know, he's here to still keep on keeping on. interesting timing that it happens, you know, on the eve of um, Valentine's Day. So, like, basically he was waking up from his drugged up state um, from surgery on Valentine's Day with a new heart, basically. Um, and that's my share for the day. Uh, some of it was HCG related, so... That's it, folks, and um, and I didn't cry, so yay for me.